Hey guys, Stephanie here with Empower Physical Therapy, and we have Katie today. And, um, you know, when we have issues, whether it's leaking or constipation or prolapse, um, I think a lot of our clients don't even realize like what the pelvic floor is, that there's all these muscles that, that um, attach down there that kind of hold things up. And, you know, the first thing that doctors want to give us is a prescription saying, oh, just do Kegel exercises. Here's a sheet of paper. This is what you need to be doing. So we're going to kind of go through some of those reasons as why Kegels is not like the right solution and what, um, what really happens down on the pelvic floor. So let's get started. <clears throat> Yes, so pelvic floor, we love it. I'm gonna take out my little model. Love using this with patients. So here's our pelvis. So if this were to be on me, you can kind of see it's, it's right here. It's nice and low. So pelvic floor, we have a lot going on in here. We have our big bones here that make up our pelvis. We've got our low back. And then on the back side, we've got our sacrum. So inside, depending on if you're a male or a female, might have a uterus. So uterus is in there sitting underneath that we've got our bladder and then on the back side we've got our bowels our rectum right there so with all of that it needs to be supported by something what's it supported by our muscles muscles sit right underneath all of this there are three big muscles that we talk about and then we've also got the friends of the pelvic floor as i like to say which are the glutes the inner thighs the lower abdominals super super important to keep all of those nice and strong as well but strong in the correct way overdoing your exercises overdoing your kegels that's actually counterproductive for what's going on so when you have a doctor saying oh, I've been told that I need to do my Kegels and I have to do 30 repetitions five times a day. That's just exhausting your muscles. Why would you do that with a knee injury? Would you go out and do, what is that, 150 squats in a day? No, you wouldn't. So why would you do that with your Kegels? It's just gonna exhaust all of that. And then that's gonna create more issues further down the chain. So let's go into like leaking. So kind of, kind of what happens, I mean, there's a lot of things that can happen with leaking, but what are some of the things that we look at from the pelvic floor perspective and even tying into, again, like why Kegels shouldn't be the solution because of, you know, things that could be going on. And I know mm -hmm. everyone's different. There's a lot of different things that we have to look at because it's not just one size fits all, which is what some people think, which, well, that's what the doctors think, Kegel exercises. <laughs> yep. But tell us a little bit more on, from the leaking perspective, what we look for. Yeah. So when I do an evaluation on somebody that comes in and they're explaining that if they've got leaking, I look at the way that their pelvis is positioned. Are they tilted too far forward? Are they tilted too far back? Because that tells me where the sacrum is positioned. That tells me whether or not things are overly stretched, overly contracted. And that really gives me an idea of, are you somebody that needs strengthening? Are you somebody that needs control on relaxing the muscles. And that's typically what I see is more times than not, people need to learn how to relax their pelvic floor and they need to learn how to contract other things around the pelvic floor, the friends of the pelvic floor to actually support it. Because a lot of times people don't have that good support in their pelvic floor to prevent the leaking episodes. So better coordination is what I'm looking for more so than can you contract your pelvic floor? How long can you contract your pelvic floor? those kinds of things, which is what doctors think that we really are doing. Yeah. I mean, everything you have to coordinate with your muscles, like whether it's, you know, throwing a baseball or, um, you know, running, like your muscles have to be firing correctly together in order for, to make those work. And if there's an imbalance of some sort, then you start having a problem and the pelvic floor is not any different. If we look at it from that way. What about like with prolapse, like, you know, people will have, you know, feel like something is hanging down. They'll have like pressure in their lower abdomen. Um, you know, tell us a little bit more about like prolapse. Cause I mean, the first thing the doctor want to do is you have to have surgery or we're going to take it out. Mm -hmm. And uh, those surgeries are awful. So yes, they help people when it gets to those end stages, they need some sort of support, but more times than not, I think it's about 50%. They have to go in for a second surgery because it doesn't support what needs to be supported. So with a prolapse, I like to use a boat analogy. So those channels where the boat is suspended in the air by ropes, and then you can lower the ropes and then the boat goes into the water. That's kind of like the way that the uterus, the bladder and the rectum are supported in the pelvic floor region. So when those ropes start lowering down, AKA the ligaments in the body start getting stretched out, the lower and lower and lower that boat goes. And then eventually touches the water, which is what a prolapse is. 
So what I look for is when can your pelvic floor support you and when can it not? Are you somebody that when the pressure in your, your abdomen area increases, your prolapse is worse, your diet affects it. Are you somebody that likes to eat a big, big, big meal for dinner? And then all of a sudden you're walking from your dining room table into your kitchen and you feel that heaviness, that pressure, because you've got so much pressure built up in your stomach. Or are you somebody that the muscles just don't want to contract at all? And then everything just starts coming through. So once again, looking at coordination, what needs to be turned on, what needs to be turned off in order to help support that prolapse. Not saying that we can reverse the prolapse, but getting that support to make it so that it's not getting worse and you don't have to go in for surgery. That's what we really want. Yeah. And sometimes I hear too, like that, like some of the prolapse that we're feeling is actually weakness and and your pelvic floor muscles and things are like pushing through that. And actually when you can get some of those things to kind of coordinate and work together, then you don't have that. Mm-hmm. Yep. It's really fun to see, honestly. Yeah. And I know like from research too, for prolapse, like there's a 50% like failure rate, 50%. But again, that's like, we see that with every, all the other parts of our body, like, you know, back mm-hmm. pain, they end up having a second back, back surgery, you know, because after the first back surgery, because they're not really getting to the source of like what truly is going on. And that's really a big problem in our healthcare system. We don't have enough time to spend with people. So we literally are just like 10 minute conversation. Here's a pill. Oh, let's go and do an injection. Oh, here's, um, let's do, we're going to get you set up for surgery. And I'm like, whoa, 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 let's just sit down and have a conversation. There's a lot of things that you can do. Um, and just lifestyle changes. People don't get into that, like how important mm-hmm. lifestyle changes are. And that can be diet related for something like this, but it's also, what are you doing throughout the day that may be creating some of these problems that we can address, that we can bring awareness around. So yeah. it's, oh, absolutely. Um, there's so many things that we don't think about. Like we have to, we have to literally treat the whole body. It's not just, Oh, I have pain right here. That's the only thing that I'm going to look at. Mm-hmm. Yep. So what absolutely. about constipation? Constipation is another big one. Yes. Constipation. I mean, if you were to actually start talking to some of your friends about their bowel movements and their bowel patterns, you would be shocked by the number of your friends that are like actually admit to having constipation at either some point of their life or it's chronic. Yeah. And what can we do for it? So I like to uh, use our little model. So this is the rectum. This is our bowels. We have a muscle that actually helps to kind of cinch off the bowel, sits around it kind of like a little horseshoe. So that muscle helps to prevent us from having just free flowing bowels throughout the day. It (laughs) cinches it off, helps with all of that. If that muscle is too tight, it's too strong. It doesn't want to actually relax for the body. That's when straining starts happening. You're starting to push and really like bear down to get a bowel movement, which is awful. That's not good for our pelvic floor. Talk about a way to get a worse prolapse is bearing <laughs> down. I call it like the power pee. We don't want a power pee. We want to relax. Same thing with a bowel movement. You shouldn't have to bear down stress. So that muscle, we want to get good coordination with it. Positionally, that can help. Um, more like relaxation techniques can help, but we don't want this constant cinch on our bowels. So using things like squatty potty, even just flipping over a laundry basket, putting it underneath your toilet, putting your feet on that to get your knees up. Those kinds of things help, but we still need to learn how to relax that muscle so that we're not getting this pinching down on our our bowels. But it's a huge issue that people just don't really like to talk about. Yeah. It's interesting because like, I find myself going up on my toes just naturally. (laughs) And when you you position yourself that way, like things just kind of free flow so much easier, um, Mm -hmm. which is essentially what the squatty potty does. But yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's interesting. Um, it's, and it's frustrating at the same time because, you know, there's so many things that go into this and, um, honestly, doctors have no clue what a good physical therapist actually can do on many fronts. Um, they have no clue. And so they just want to give people, Oh, here's a sheet because this is what they, they typically would give. This is what the internet shows. Honestly, the internet shows on all these conditions, surgery. Um, you just have to live with it. Here's Mm -hmm. some pads and, um, Oh, do Kegels. (laughs) 
And every person every that we talk to, I mean, literally, we just had a conversation this weekend. I don't understand. I'm like, I'm supposed to hold this position for, you know, X amount of minutes and do it five times a day for the Kegel exercises. Like that is the norm. Like that's what people are being told. And you're like, that is crazy. Because mm-hmm. it just it exhausts you. Yeah. yeah. It's horrible, horrible for the body. Yeah. So learning how to actually get that coordination without having to do Kegels is ideal. Yeah. And I think people don't realize too, like when you start having pelvic pain or things like that, they literally will have, um, um, you can have pain in, in your back, you know, you can have pain in in your abdomen, like muscle wise, because the muscle will literally, um, come in and just protect. Cause when you have pain, that's what the muscles do. They protect, which is just Mm -hmm. a symptom of what's going on. So, um, you can have issues where you think it might be back pain, but there's some other things that are going on. um, and you don't even realize that it could be really something related to your pelvic floor. Yep. Very interesting. Even hip pain. I had a conversation earlier about hip pain and how it can be related to the pelvic floor. You figure out which muscle it is and then boom, all of a sudden hip pain's gone. Yeah. Really cool stuff. Yeah. So really awesome. So this is going to be, um, you know, great information for people. I'm so excited for people to just continue to learn. I mean, that's the whole point. Empower yourself, give yourself education so that you can make a better decision about your health. That's really what we're here to do. And um, I'm so excited to get this message out there for people.